Hello and welcome for another episode Flood Protection Secrets. Uh, yeah, today while I'm recording it, uh, I'm sitting in Dubai and uh, yeah, I watched the beautiful Dubai Creek by night and uh, yeah, I'm in, in, in front at the horizon or not at the horizon. Uh, it's, it's only one kilometer away. I, I can see the Burj Khalifa and uh, Dubai by night looks really beautiful, uh, especially all these illuminated uh, ships, boats, uh, boats uh, where you can uh, have a, a river cruise uh, and um, uh, river ride and uh, yeah, uh, eat, drink, dance. Uh, it's quite interesting and uh, very beautiful. Unfortunately, uh, I cannot transfer the images um, in this podcast, but I want to tell you a little bit about the flooding situation because uh, climate change really uh, has, has worsened and uh, is getting worse, what I always said. And, um, you know, recently we have seen a lot of flooding um, uh, in Sumatra, um, one of the main isles uh, in uh, Indonesia, uh, with, uh, with many dead people. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's always very, very critical because most of the time it, it, it hits uh, the poor people who cannot simply run away, who cannot improve the, the quality of their houses. But uh, very often also the rich are affected <laughs> and their cars are floating away and are damaged and cannot be used anymore. And then another example is, um, that was I think from last week, uh, in Kenya, hundreds of schools uh, were, were closed, not due to the heat, like what happened in Thailand and in the Philippines, uh, before uh, now no because of flooding and um, 2000 2000 schools cannot operate and cannot be opened again because they were flooded and that is a the biggest problem um, very often that uh, it takes too long to renovate and to um, yeah that the, the children can uh, the pupils can can go back to school so I always say, you know, look, protect the critical infrastructure. And the critical infrastructure for a country is definitely also or are the schools and universities. Uh, and um, don't spend your hard-earned budget, your hard-earned money. At the end, the money is coming from the taxpayers, so from all of us, uh, for renovation and uh, replacement purchases. Um, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, isn't it better to Im improve the schools, um, the inventory and invest in uh, better, yeah, better inventory, better schools, better equipment, better teachers than to invest it in the same what was at school in the school before and what has been, uh, what was destroyed. And then you wait for the next flood and will, it will be destroyed again. So you can never improve your education system. That is really, um, really, really, yeah, sad to see. And in, in April, April, they said in, in, in Germany, that was the, that was the 11th, 11th month with record temperatures, um, since, um, since, uh, I know worldwide, sorry, it was, it was not only in Germany, uh, and they, they count since, since 1850. And, um, um, so the temperature has, has been up by 1.58 degrees Celsius. And um, the, the global average temperature was at 15, 15 degrees. And in Europe, it was the second hottest summer, uh, a second hottest month ever in Europe. So you can see there are a lot of, of messages uh, from uh, around the world. In, um, another one, Kenya, I mentioned already, before that is already since a long time that these uh, schools are closed and even hong kong hong kong has seen the warmest april of course if the whole world has seen the warmest april um since ever then uh, hong kong most probably is not an exception and they they calculate and compare the weather data since 1884 and uh, it was uh, yeah uh, the summer has not started yet but <laughs> the april was has already seen uh, records. And so that, that should make us think because uh, um, that will sooner or later hit everybody. Even Bangladesh, Bangladesh had seen the longest, longest heat, 
heat wave or yeah heat wave uh, since 75 years uh, on 30 consecutive days um, you have seen 36 degrees and more and most of the time it was around 40 degrees and more yeah so that is of course terrible and uh, you, you you cannot what will you do in such an uh, such a situation and so both these heat um, heat periods and uh, rainy periods are arriving more frequently and more intense so you see more heat and you see more rain at the same time the problem is always that the people when it is very hot forget that the rain will follow they always say oh there's no rain it's very hot and when it is raining uh, they don't think about the heat okay the heat uh, you cannot protect yourself uh, you can protect yourself in a way that you have better insulation in your buildings that you have a that you uh, perhaps uh, include the basement uh, then you have natural cooling from mother earth in a way you know? and uh, you can uh, add uh, air cons of course and uh, include a better air con system with higher efficiency yeah these are the things uh, what, what i call climate change and at the end it's not climate change it's climate uh, climate uh, uh, yeah climate changing already uh, the, the the revolution is already here these were only a few examples. So let's let let's uh, move to the regions. Uh, and uh, as you know, I'm, I talk and I report about uh, Asia. So uh, in Southeast Asia, that was was the same. I mentioned the Thailand and the Philippines already. Currently, it's very very hot in the in the Philippines, around 40 degrees and more, and uh, people are really suffering. And uh, um, they they suffer the more if, if at the same time. If at the same time you uh, you don't have electricity and you don't have uh, water, what happens several times? So without electricity, all the pumps are not working, and without pumps, no water supply. So that is really hard for the people. But I talk about the flooding and the heavy rain. So all these countries uh, in Southeast Asia, so whether it is the Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, and of course Cambodia and. Uh, and um, uh, Myanmar, what else uh, uh, belongs? Laos uh, and um, uh, Bahrain. No, not Bahrain. Bahrain is in the Middle East. Um, 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 in Southeast Asia, um, they see all this rain, and that is terrible. And that is not only destroying the cheaper, the, the simpler houses. And by the way, that is has a high value for the owners. For them. They, it, it costs a fortune, perhaps. Uh, if they lose uh, the only car, they cannot simply go to the next car shop and buy a new one. For the rich people, that does not really, they don't really feel it. They go to the next car shop, they buy a new Mercedes or whatever it is. Uh, but however, perhaps you love your Mercedes you have, and then you want to protect it. And why to spend money for a new Mercedes if you can protect it for uh, compared less money compared to the value of the car and this pro water protection these flood barriers will serve you i always say for the next 100 years with a good maintenance plan so that is an alternative yeah and uh, if you hear by the way some background noise that is because i'm sitting outdoor and uh, watch the dubai creek and uh, there is some uh, only a little, little traffic here below me and sometimes it's a little bit more noisier so Please excuse that. This time I'm not recording in the studio. Yeah, in East Asia, it's it's a similar situation in Taiwan and South Korea and China, um, Ho Hong Kong, of course, and uh, um, um, yeah, South Korea. I mentioned already Japan, of course. Uh, uh, they see terrible flood flooding situations and terrible heavy rain uh, due to the typhoons, um, how it is called in. Uh, in this region in east uh, south uh, in east east asia south asia with uh, india india pakistan and bangladesh and sri lanka it's the same thing and the maldives uh, it's the same thing um, terrible uh, impact and uh, the flooding situation scenario is is the same it's the same building and it doesn't play any role whether this building is located in southeast asia and east asia in america in north america in europe it's always the same water will get into the garage and flood the mercedes that is inside and then Mercedes is very happy because they can sell a brand new car if the people stay with the brand. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then the Middle East that geographically belongs to uh, belongs to South uh, to uh, Asia as well. And um, 
especially the Gulf region where I currently am. So I recorded here in Dubai, sitting at my second floor at this platform uh, and watching the beautiful Burj Khalifa and the skyline and uh, the illuminated uh, Dubai Creek. I really can recommend uh, to come to old Dubai and not to stay in the, in, in the commercial and financial uh, district. Uh, it's more beautiful. Um, yeah. And even here, they have seen a lot of rain. Uh, just recently, uh, Dubai was, uh, uh, was flooded and, uh, and uh, that was uh, the heavy, most heaviest rainfall uh, they have seen in the past. And um, yeah, Qatar can tell similar stories and Saudi Arabia and Oman, of course. They call it cyclones um, here at, at this area. Uh, hurricanes uh, at the US, in the US, uh, and so cyclones, hurricanes, typhoons, it's all the same. We, in Germany, we say it's bad weather. <laughs> we don't have a name for that. Um, but um, very soon, we should also need to create a name because uh, right now, uh, they expect terrible rainfall um, during the next days in Germany. And um, so we have seen this heavy rainfall already uh, two weeks ago, one and a half week, uh, two weeks ago. And it's not stopping. So you see, it doesn't play any role whether it is a, a country in Europe, whether it is a country in South America, North America, Africa, Australia, or Asia, or in the Middle East, where I am right now. So, yeah, what to do? At the end, for all, it is the same. You need the plan first. We always get increase from purchasing the procurement department and then they always say, oh, give me the best price, give me the best price until tomorrow. And then you ask two questions and nobody is able to answer because they don't know the question and they don't know the answers either. And uh, so it's really better to establish a plan first because flood protection is not only putting barriers somewhere. Flood protection is think about the right technology first. Think about how you can still run your business or yeah, operate in a way, um, whether it is a school, a hospital, an airport or subway or in, at your house. Uh, is it possible to close, uh, to install the barriers when you are not around? Or is, is it easy, easy enough that your, that perhaps your grandmother can do that? So all these things must be considered. Uh, where to store the barriers, for instance, if it is uh, in a demandable flat barrier. People always forget that. Then I asked for it and they said, oh, it's not important, you don't need. I said, what do you, do, do, uh, you don't need? Of course, you need a storage system for that. And uh, that must be, shall it be centralized? Shall it be uh, locally stored at the entrances? Uh, it depends also on the height. If you have a height of 2 meter 40, uh, what we uh, currently have um, in one project, then you need eight, uh, no, sorry, you need, yeah, uh, eight uh, flat barriers already. With a, with a height of 300 millimeters each. That means eight pieces of barrier and per, perhaps each is two, two meter long. Uh, 180 or something. It depends. So then you have eight of these pieces and perhaps, uh, with a length of 10 meters, you have already, um, 10, 5, uh, 5, 40, 40 of these barriers, 40 to 50. So you need a system for that. That is why I say start with a plan and, um, and for huge projects, start with a plan for the plan. Establish the communication uh, first before you start thinking about any engineering. That is That can be done easily. So I'm a German engineer and I see that all the time that the people start doing something without having any plan. I ask you one question. Would you start uh, spending money for high-rise building, uh, 40 floors, and... Um, you just start to build it, to sign a contract about 100 million euro or dollars without having any plan, any geological study, any plan from your architect, any budget price for all the, all the material? Of course not. You would never do that. And why you think you should do that and you can do that for a flood protection um, challenge? That is also not possible. Uh, so... Yeah, plan first, and then you can choose at the end of the day um, uh, when when you have done your engineering assessment, and then you have selected uh, amongst the top 14 flood protection uh, barriers. 
I consider them the best in the world. And, and we distinguish between four groups. Did, did I mention that already? I think I mentioned that several times. So um, group number one are the portable flood barriers. Portable is everything what is demountable, what can, can be mobile, like the Enero mobile flood barriers. And uh, the RS demountable flood barriers, uh, uh, the RS windows uh, uh, cover, for instance, to protect the windows. And uh, group number two are all flood doors and flood gates. So everything what can be uh, used as a, as a swinging system uh, and a, a system or pivoting as, as well. And, and system number three uh, are automatic flood barriers. Uh, everything that is dropping down, raising up, uh, flipping up uh, or sliding, for instance. Uh, and, uh, so the, and and even for for this one you have different different mode of modes of uh, operation, uh, uh, so that must be considered as well. And uh, yeah, last but not least, uh, group number four are permanent glass uh, fl flood barriers, uh, glass flood barriers. So uh, why glass? Um, like an aquarium, you remember that perhaps? Um, that is what hotels need to um, protect the hotel with a breakfast room. At, at the hotel site and uh, of course you don't want to block the beautiful view of the guests taking the breakfast um, to, to the sea or, or to the mountain or to the landscape uh? so if not they would feel like in jail they would never come back again uh? <laughs> and they have to pay for their, for their night in jail oh my goodness <laughs> they will not do that okay these are the four groups and uh, that's uh, what uh, what unites uh, all these people. I mentioned the climate change impact, and that has a strong impact on all countries, all regions worldwide. I explained a little bit uh, the situation in in Asia, starting in East Asia and then going westwards uh, to the Middle East, where I am right now. I record this uh, podcast uh, in Dubai, and that's why it is a little bit noisy outside. I hope you can tolerate that today. I'm not in my studio and um, uh, I'm here outside and I enjoy the view of the uh, Dubai Creek. I really can recommend that. Uh, that um, is uh, very beautiful to see. And uh, I, I can also see the Burj Khalifa with the blinking lights. Um, and uh, yeah, and then at the end, if you want to protect your inventory um, and uh, to save, uh, uh, yeah, to protect your family, your employees, uh, the citizens uh, using the public uh, public uh, installations like uh, airport or hospital or um, or train stations for instance and then plan first you need to plan for the plan then you start with the engineering assessment then followed by the detailed engineering and then finally you can give everything to your procurement because now and only now you really know how much money you need to spend there's no way to do that earlier unless you have a very small tiny project then there are exceptions possible, but you need definitely a plan. That is what a German engineer says. We always have a plan. All German engineers have plans. And perhaps you decide on your own uh, why German cars are high-end and um, normal. I will not say preferred. There are also other good cars in, in, in the world, but uh, people normally appreciate the quality of the German cars. And there is a reason um, also for other products coming from Germany, also from Switzerland and, and Austria, of course. Uh, there are so beautiful products in Switzerland and in, in, in Austria. And uh, yeah, not to forget Sweden, because our Enero mobile flat barrier is a product coming from Sweden. So yeah, that's it for today. That was another episode uh, live from Dubai. Um, uh, flood protection secrets and if you like this episode then please uh, sub subscribe to this channel if you haven't done yet and uh, tell it to your friends to your employees uh, to your family members and uh, stay tuned and uh, stay safe and flood free <laughs>